It's a familiar sight to anyone living at Webster Groves, the passing of a Union Pacific train on the north side of town, or of a Burlington Northern Santa Fe train on the south side. Often a nuisance to impatient modern commuters, and yet an important part of our town's history and growth as a community. The railroads have been here since the 1850s. Webster Groves began with a number of farms and homes built a short distance from St. Louis. In 1854, Dr. Artemis Bullard, much taken with the beautiful countryside, founded a school which he named Webster College for Boys, after statesman Daniel Webster. The building, which is still standing, is now part of the Great Circle Campus. As early as 1851, a right-of-way for the Pacific Railroad had been purchased and by 1855, the railway completed construction of its line from St. Louis to Jefferson City. Artemis Bullard was a great promoter of the railway route, which passed within a short distance of his college for boys, promising to bring ever more students from St. Louis and elsewhere. But on the inaugural trip of the railroad, Thursday, November 1, 1855, a bridge across the Gasconade River failed, and the train, carrying a number of dignitaries, including Bullard, plunged into the river. A letter from Edward S. Lewis, a passenger on that train, describes the disaster. My dear wife, you have no doubt heard of the shocking catastrophe which occurred here yesterday. The whole train of 12 cars was precipitated a distance of 30 feet down through the bridge over the Gasconade River. Nearly all of the cars are torn to atoms. 34 people, including Bullard, died and nearly a hundred more were injured. Bullard's school did not long outlive his death, but Webster College for Boys did give a name to the railway station, Webster. It stood beside the railroad tracks on Church Street, which was later to be renamed Gore Avenue. A while later, when it was discovered there was already a city known as Webster in Missouri, the word Groves was added in recognition of the forest environs. The station still stands, though it has not been used as a train station for a long time. Today it houses a Montessori school. Webster Groves would not incorporate as a city for several more decades, but for now there was a village, a railroad station, and a number of families living here. The first business to open in town was Moody's General Store, opened by Augustus Moody on Gore Avenue near the Pacific Railroad tracks. He was also the first postmaster. There is a story, reproduced in a few local histories, that Moody was killed by a mailbag thrown from a train. How that story got to be circulated is a mystery. We spoke to Robert Moody, a distant relative of Augustus Moody, about what really happened. On December the 24th, uh, Christmas Eve, 1870, at approximately 8.40 p.m., Augustus heard the train approaching. It was the time of day when the evening mail train came, and it paused here to drop off and pick up mail. The platform for the train was across the tracks from Moody's store, and he left the store and started to cross the tracks, knowing, that is assuming, that the train was slowing down and going to stop. However, that night, the mail train had been delayed in St. Louis, and the dispatcher had allowed a fast freight to precede it down the tracks. Thus, the train was not slowing. Rather, it was moving at perhaps 30 miles an hour. Moody was hit by the train and killed. It was a tragic accident. Later, the Missouri Supreme Court held that the railroad was not at fault. In 1889, St. Louis businessman Lilburn McNair, with a group of investors, founded the Tuxedo Park subdivision, named for the original Tuxedo Park in New York. 
hoping to provide convenient access to prospective purchasers of his new homes. They built a railroad station in the Queen Anne style and then sold it to the Pacific Railroad for $1. By 1893, 20 families lived in Tuxedo Park. In 1891, a group of investors calling themselves the Webster Real Estate Company bought a 160-acre tract of land they intended to develop as an exclusive residential neighborhood called Webster Park. They sold an acre of land at Oakwood Avenue and Glen Road to the Pacific Railroad for $5, so the railroad could build a station and attract commuters to the new subdivision. It was called the Webster Park Station. Within a few decades, Webster Park was a thriving subdivision. For a while, the Frisco Railroad was running from Pacific, Missouri to St. Louis on the same rails as the Pacific Railroad. This arrangement lasted until 1883, when the rail lines on the south side of town, running past Old Orchard, were completed. Two Webster Grove stations served the Frisco, the Passenger Depot on Old Orchard Avenue and the Shadyside Depot on Big Bend near Gray Avenue, which was built in 1910. Everything from the development of businesses to the names of streets were influenced by the presence of the railroads. There is still a Pacific Avenue on the north side of town and a Frisco Avenue on the south side. As new modes of transportation developed, the necessity of train travel lessened for many people. Streetcars and automobiles began to take much of the commuter traffic. In 1950, Webster Groves was experiencing a problem with traffic congestion, as reported in the Webster News Times in April of that year. Also reported that year was the fact that the St. Louis Public Service Company would be closing down its streetcar lines in favor of using buses from then on. Needless to say, the heyday of commuter train travel was over. The Webster Park station was closed and torn down in 1950, and today there is no sign of it on this corner. The Tuxedo Park station was closed as a passenger depot, but it was never torn down because people admired its Queen Anne style and its stone construction. Today it is owned by the city of Webster Groves and leased to an architectural firm. The old orchard station is also long gone, though you can find the old foundation at the corner of a restaurant parking lot off of Old Orchard. Perhaps most interesting of all, in 1938, the Pacific Railroad granted permission to the Big Bend Railroad Club to use part of its shady side depot. The railroad eventually stopped using the depot and constructed an open-air shelter on the north side of the tracks, where train passengers boarded until the late 1960s. Today, the old Pacific Railroad is known as the Union Pacific, and the old Frisco Railroad is the Burlington Northern Santa Fe, or BNSF and both still run frequent freight. So the next time you're stuck in a long line of cars waiting for a train to pass, perhaps you can spend the time thinking about how important the railroads were in the development of our hometown of Webster Groves.